Listen, my name's Danny. Um, I've come a long way to meet with you. I really appreciate your time. I know you're a busy man. I'm here because I'm on a bit of a mission. I had a revelation recently. You see, for thousands of years, man has walked the earth thinking he's unique and he's special. But lately, I've started to wonder whether chimps are people too. Any thoughts? So, how did I get here? To the West California desert. A chimpanzee called Cody and me, Danny Wallace, a Londoner, a writer, and a complete non-scientist. Was I mad to imagine that chimps could be people too? It all started two months ago when the BBC put me on a speedboat and sent me to Africa, to Lake Victoria in the heart of Uganda. I'd been given a special scientific mission. This is Nagamba Island. I'm going to meet some chimps. I was here to discover what makes us humans unique, why we seem to be the greatest ape of all. <laughs> I'd been told we're incredibly different, that we can do things a chimp could only ever dream of. Yeah. But when you think about it, how different are we? I mean, don't chimps have language? How complicated is what they're saying? And don't chimps have politics? It sounds like a reality show. <laughs> yeah. really Who will are. be the alpha male? Yeah. Dwayne Nichols ever. Along the way, I would challenge a wide range of experts. Now, what is the difference between Harvey here and a chimp? And I'd uncover some rather surprising reactions. No! Uh -huh. Don't do that! But then you take something like a full-grown adult chimp. In lots of ways, it's more of a person, in a way, than a newborn child. They may not qualify for the right to vote, but they qualify for the fundamental rights not to be abused. If you're interested in whether or not apes can acquire human culture, you have to give them opportunity to have a human life. Is it scary? It's, well, it's, well, it's scary. It seemed like the closer I got, the more like people they became. This is an historic peace accord between man and chimp. We've sorted out all the problems, all the differences. The reasons for my journey were rooted in cutting-edge science. Researchers have started unravelling the animal's genetic code. New evidence tonight that blurs the dividing line between us and them. We're nearer than we ever thought to our animal ancestors. And not just nearer. Some claim that genetically, we're practically the same. 99.4% identical to human DNA. And then, I heard about this. Now a group of scientists say we're so similar, chimps should be reclassified as members of the human family. The reasons for all this evidence seemed obvious. Chimps were people too. I wanted to tell the world. But Hello. I couldn't do it on my own. You've heard of chimpanzees? Yes. yes. Chimpanzees are people too. Over to you. They seemed impressed. Chimpanzees are people, people too. too. We're all people. We're all the same. We're yeah, all kind of yeah, there. What yeah. do you mean? How, why are they people too? We share 99.4% of the same crucial DNA with chimps. Yeah. And for 99.4. 99.4. Write that down. The New Eden. Exactly. The New Eden. I'm, I'm trying to sell a vision. Trying to sell a vision. A belief. So Rebranding chimps. The ad agency were on board, and just one week later, they'd come up with some excellent ideas. It's a chimps land, but we call them the humans. That would be cracking. But they'd also thought up an awkward question. 
The thing about the 99% is, are certain people going to cut the cynics? Are they going to come along and go, what about the 1%? I think the 1% is largely a, a, a fondness for bananas and, uh, and facial hair. <laughs> You've got facial hair, do you like bananas? When they think of me, I want them to, you know, I want them to think, Danny Wallace, chimp. Now, with a logo and some flyers, I felt ready to take on the world of science. So I headed to the Royal Society, an organisation steeped in history and science. Today I would mingle with some of the world's leading primate experts, the very scientists who spend their days studying the noble chimpanzee. I felt sure that these same people would jump straight on board and join my campaign. Chimps are people too. I don't really agree, you know, see, so... Um, oh, don't you? No. I think uh, people are chimps too. That's good, that's nice, I like that. Chimps uh, are people too, well yes, in the light in which we're talking about it today, yes. Yeah? Chimps are people too. Yes. I'd say it's probably factually inaccurate. Factually inaccurate? No. Aren't they a bit like toddlers? No. No? No? Uh, no. It's not going, it's not going 100% well. I'll be honest, it wasn't even going 99.4% well. It seemed like the more eminent a scientist was, the more he'd disagree with me. Like Professor Andy Whiten, who was quite clear when I asked him what the one big difference was. Well, I, I think there's more than one big difference. Um, and in a sense, it's in the brain. We, our brains are three times as big and structured differently. And then the output of that is we have speech and language, which wild apes really don't do. At least Andy Whiten spoke to me. Many just ignored me or turned away and pretended to drink tea. Or they try and warn me off the whole project, like Professor Nicholas Humphrey. And if I said the phrase, chimps are people too, to you, what would your reaction be? I would wonder why on earth you were saying it. I really? Would, it, chimps are not people. I mean, chimps are chimpanzees and people are people. And why would you want to confuse them? It won't do chimps any good. And it certainly won't help, really help us understand much more about human beings either. I feel like maybe, uh scientific community aren't really taking me that seriously. Which is annoying, because 50 quids have these made. But I wasn't going to give up that easily. I was sure all I needed was just a little more evidence. So I headed for the very centre of Africa. Katie, are you there? Yes, Danny, I'm here. Thank God for that. This time I brought my own scientist, Katie Slocum from St Andrews University. Katie was going to guide me into a world of wild chimps. I figured if I could witness wild chimps acting like people of their own accord, then that would be crucial. I saw not one chimp. Almost coming up to half past six, so they'll probably be having their last feed and be looking to go and make nests in about half an hour, probably. Make nests? By yeah. seven? Yeah. They're in bed by seven? Yeah. And then they sleep right through till seven and then get up and do the whole thing again. That's kind of the way I live. <laughs> <laughs> and so, we were off. This is Bodongo National Park, home to about 60 chimps. They're wild, but they're used to researchers like Katie being around. So, they'll do their best to ignore us, which is a little rude when you've just flown halfway around the world. So that's Quera and her baby Caro. I think we've just stumbled upon something quite cool. Oh, we have. This is a group of uh, very senior males having breakfast. Man, it's like a dance meeting. Oh my god. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at the big fella in the back. It's a 
big males, although they can be very aggressive and are more aggressive towards the females, um, all of them are very, very tolerant with the youngsters. So they'll have them crawling all over them, playing with them. So they understand that they're just kids? Yeah. And kids get like that? Yeah. Normally in a chimpanzee community, there's one male who is dominant to all the others, and he's called the alpha male. The alpha male. Um, but however, at the moment, it's, there's basically three very large chimps who Ooh. are all battling it out. To become the alpha to male. To become the alpha male. So it's basically between Dwayne, Nick and Zephyr. Sounds like a reality show. <laughs> Yeah. And they really Who will are. be the alpha male? Yeah. Dwayne, Nick or Zephyr? My, my, my betting is on Nick. Yeah? yeah. I'll go with Dwayne. <laughs> so now Jamie is climbing on her belly. She's got about a week old baby. Oh my god, yeah. You can just see his tiny head. Katie's research here involves chimp sounds. She'll record one chimp and then play it back to another to see its reaction. She wants to know whether chimps are conveying meaning to each other, or as we call it, speaking. How complicated is what they're saying? I mean, are you able to understand, are chimps able to understand each other's calls properly? Yes, I mean, so, um, that's our assumption, is that chimps know exactly what, what the calls mean. But unfortunately for us, it's a bit like going to a foreign country and trying to understand a foreign language. Mm. They produce, as I'm sure you can now hear, mm. a huge variety of sounds. There's a huge sound. variety of sounds. Um, and so it's actually very difficult to get a good grip on exactly what each of them means. Do you know so what that one was? That was a pant hoot, so that's their long distance communication. Just go, hello. Because I think it must be an absolutely key element of their life. It's just that so Well, far, where would we be without it? Absolutely. <laughs> what was that? Because they, they start to kind of whimper now. That means I found really good food. High quality stuff. Yeah, high quality food. Um, whereas when they give the lower kind of, oh, oh, it seems to correspond with lower quality food. Now, while Katie's definitely not saying that chimps have a language as rich and complex as ours, she is discovering they have at least the beginnings of a language. But one thing they definitely do have is a pretty firm grasp on the basic skills of bullying. They're powerful. They are essentially five times stronger than an average human male. So very strong. Wow. So that's why when they're going through the forest and everything just bends in their way as they shake it, if you tried to do a similar thing, yeah. things wouldn't really move quite I'm not really, uh, I'm not really an average male. <laughs> I'm kind of half chimp. I think they'd disagree. What they do though, you know, challenge me to an arm wrestle. I've got tactics. They probably just kill you. It's <laughs> good tactics. <sighs> so, I've had my day in the forest with the chimps. It's been good. And it's confirmed a lot for me as well. You know, when you look into the eyes of a chimp, you do get this weird sense of recognition. And I think they, they do the same to me, I hope unless it was horror. It's a strange thing, though, because, I mean, they all seem very content here. They seem very, very happy with their lot. And I kind of think that if I lived here, that's probably what I'd do as well. You know, I'd probably just sit about eating a bit of fruit and mucking about with my friends. So it just makes me think more and more that, really, in my opinion, chimps are people. But what are people? What's a person? Now, those are some pretty deep questions that I'm perhaps not too qualified to answer. So this is where philosopher Julian Bergini steps in. He's paid to know things like this. But I guess my question to you is, philosophically, what are people? 
very big question. Isn't very it? big question indeed. I mean, some people would say a person is just a human being, uh, but that's kind of not very satisfactory. I mean, look at human people. Look at, say, newborn infants. Newborn infants lack a lot of the characteristics we associate with people. I mean, they can't use language, for example. They have a very limited sense of self. They can't stand on two feet, for example. They can only crawl. And if you look at the other end of life, look at people who are suffering from really very bad dementia or so, and also people perhaps are in permanent vegetative states, things like that, they lack, lack a lot of the characteristics of people as well. But they're people, aren't they? But, but we consider we... them people, exactly. Yeah. The fact that they don't have the full characteristics of people doesn't mean we don't give them a lot of the rights of people. But then you take something like a chimp, a full-grown adult chimp. Now, it has quite a lot of sophisticated awareness of itself and its environment. It can communicate, it can be taught language and so forth. So in lots of ways, it's more advanced, it's more of a person in a way, than a newborn child. Julian had reassured me. It might just be possible that chimps could be people too. Sample of DNA from me, from my human mate Ed, and from an old friend of mine, Cody. We were to take part in a groundbreaking experiment. Oh yeah. These are six females mm -hmm. and you and Ed and the chimp and you can see that no one is exactly the same. Well. See that Ed and the chimp are identical. Let, just exactly, there's no differences there There's at no all difference in, any in that it. length of sequence. But if we compare you and Ed, uh -huh. what we find is that there are six differences. Six between me six. and Ed and none between Ed and the chimp. And none between Ed and the chimp. So according to science, my friend Ed's genes suggest that he might smell like a chimp. Chimpanzees and humans can sometimes be more similar to one another than they are to other members of the same species. But that's just the beginning. This body odour gene can dictate whether women will find a man attractive or not. They can sniff out a genetically suitable mate. So we thought we'd do a little experiment. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I wore a T-shirt. My friend Ed wore a T-shirt, and our little friend Cody the Chimp also wore a T-shirt. The T-shirts are all exactly the same, except that each one smells of our individual sweat. That's it. We wondered whether these potential suitors would choose me, Ed, or the Chimp as their perfect genetic mate, just by sniffing the t-shirts. Now they don't know that one of these t-shirts belongs to a chimp. <laughs> it's really, really bad. And they certainly don't know that one of them is mine. That one is a little bit fruity, I think. Okay. Like a fine wine. <laughs> a was definitely the favourite. I think A is the most attractive. A is the most attractive. Yeah. C is definitely the less attractive. The least attractive. Yes. Yeah, than A. And that, that is definitely the worst one. Okay. C. C again. A, worst. A I find. A is most attractive. I'm thinking most chimp or Ed. Yeah. Okay. A, A I find. A is most attractive. The most attractive, yeah. Okay. C is, is really quite least? very much the least, and, right. and B just seems to fall somewhere in between, in between the two. All right, all right. A was doing all right at one point. Um, C definitely not going to have kids with these people. Um, I'm thinking that's chimp. I actually think that's what I think C stands for chimp. So um, I have to see. Okay. So T-shirt A belongs to Danny's friend. Ed. Okay. Right. So uh, Ed wore a t-shirt for a couple of nights and, um, and donated it to us. C belongs to Danny. <laughs> so, Hang on. I so, think, so I Jill... Think, I think there may have been something gone wrong here. Right. I don't know. Because C was very unpopular. Uh, C was unpopular for those two. Right. But um, a not a unpopular. Woman, it's a, a mature woman. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. exactly. Okay. So, so Jill preferred Great. your T-shirt. So we could quite happily have children. You two would run for the hills. Yes. Right. Don't say it like that. Don't go <laughs> okay. yes and laugh but at me. All three of you 
found that the t-shirt from individual B had sort of in between, not mm -hmm. unattractive, but also not very appealing. Mm -hmm. This t-shirt was worn by a chimpanzee. Really? Yeah, I thought it was very similar to this one. Thank you very much. Right, okay. <laughs> so that would be Downey. Really? So that would be Downey. So yours was a bit stronger, though. Right. <laughs> yes. So you're saying so I smell more than a chimpanzee. Yeah. That one was much more. Yeah, yeah this right. one was much more subtle in between. Yeah, I said right. that. Twice. Yeah, that's easier. true. Beautiful. Lovely. The smell, <laughs> of, the smell of normality in the same world. Slightly chimpy, I think. But then you seem to like that. <laughs> well, I'll let Ed know that he's very popular with the ladies of Cambridge. Uh, I'll let the chimp know he's a lot more popular than me. <laughs> Thank you, guys. The sweet-smelling chimp in question, Cody, lives and works in America, in the entertainment capital of the world. This is Hollywood, California. It's a place of dreams, you know? If you're a chimp in Hollywood, you can basically land yourself a ten-picture deal. A bit better than PG Tipsats. Hollywood loves a good chimp. But unlike their human counterparts, showbiz chimps live a slightly less opulent lifestyle out in the desert with their trainers. Trainers like Rick Kelly. Rick teaches his chimps to do human things. I'm here to see if simply training chimps to act like people is enough to make them people. Let me have some of that. It looks pretty good. <laughs> that is good, huh? It is good, isn't it? Yes, it is good, isn't it? See, if I shake my head, they shake their head too. No, they don't. What, what is that? What is that? What is that? It's supposed to go up and down, up and down like this. There you go. Good, 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 good. That smooches me hard. Okay, put your feet back down. Feet back down. Give them hand signals and talk to them. Like, if I fold my hands, fold your hands. Good girls. Do you kind of think of these guys as, you know, toddlers? I think of them as a five-year-old human with the strength of Bam Bam Flintstone. Right. I do human things with them. Mm. I mean, that's all I do. Mm. Looking good. And what he does is teach them the slapstick side of being human. But that's what Hollywood seems to want. What do you get? Headache? Yep. <laughs> In the wild, chimps don't bare their teeth to show happiness. So Rick has to teach them. Good girls. So how does Rick do it? What does this humanizing process cost the chimps? Maybe more than we think. Because what you should know about Rick is that his real name is Sid Yost. And he's been accused of using cruel training methods by animal rights groups. Now, when we were there, he was keen to deny all the charges and put on a good show. Just to be absolutely 100% clear, and we've got it and, and it's out of the way, there's, there's absolutely no kind of animal cruelty. There's no beating up on a chimp. There's no kind of, none of that stuff. You see what you see, you know? You see what you see, that's all I can tell you. Yeah. I mean, I can, do we beat on our chimps? No. Do we train our chimps with love, patience, calmness, consistency? Yes. Do the chimps have to have some sort of discipline? Absolutely. Rick maintains that he's merely treating his chimps in the same way that we'd treat our kids. Climbing over the fence, he'd be doing all kinds of weird things. So when does the discipline come? Does everyone that has children out there believe that some sort of discipline must have been done with their child when they're young? Otherwise, they're going to be in jail or prison someday. Will you agree? Mm. Okay, you agree with that? Well, yeah, feral kids. I mean, you know. that's a feral kid. But the thing is, if I, if you're young and you're going to bite somebody, go no. Uh -huh. Don't do that. It's a shock. Yeah. So the next time that comes up to bite somebody, go, no. They go, okay, that's cool. Don't want to hear that again. And is that, but is part of that and because that's all it is right there. Uh, yeah. That's simple. But the whole kind of the no and, and this little bit, it, I, I understand the positive reinforcement and there's nothing in their mind they're thinking, I better back off. Rick's a big fella. He might hit me again. No, I don't think they even realize I'm a big fella. Right. Yeah, they're, they're not blind, Rick. So is Rick a chimp beater? The US courts are due to decide later this year. Meanwhile, he'll continue making people out of chimps his own way. So 
so uh, so that was good, you know, hanging out with the chimps. I'm not sure though what I was watching in a weird way. Um, I'm not sure if they knew what they were doing or whether they just learnt it the way a dog kind of knows to knows to bow or, or roll over. So certainly what they were doing was, you know, people like. It looked fairly human. I'm just not sure it was enough. Not yet. But what is enough to be a person anyway? Take Harvey here. He can't speak. He can only just walk on two legs. He's rubbish. But in many ways, he's just like the chimps. Genetically, he's just a tiny bit different, but he is clearly a person. Just a few small genes seem to make an enormous difference. To make sure I'd got it right, I went to see a geneticist at University College London, Mark Thomas. Mark, thank you very much indeed for meeting with me. Um, I'm on a bit of a mission, a chimp-based mission in many ways. Um, it seems to me pretty obvious that chimps and humans are incredibly similar. Um, and in fact, there's that, there's that research that says they're 99.4% the same. Right. What that's telling you is that the number of genetic differences you require to get the big differences that you see between humans and chimpanzees is actually very small. So just a few key genes. For example, um, we could just have one gene or just a small number of genes that then control how other genes operate. And if they're changed, then that could have a very, very big effect. And that's a knock-on effect to yeah. the other things. Yeah. Yeah. I found this outside. Um, I've rented him for about 10 minutes. Um, now, what is the difference between Harvey here and a chimp? Well, a good example is a gene that's involved in making the muscles for jaw. Mm. Non-human primates have very, very strong jaw muscles, and they tend to have an anchor point at the top here called the sagittal crest. Right. And us humans, we don't. Mm. Now, it turns out that um, a a gene that controls some of the muscle in the jaws was just knocked out in the humans, in the human lineage. It just stopped working. It just went? Yeah. One of the arguments is that by not having such strong jaw muscles, it allows the brain to then grow bigger and the skull case to grow bigger. Right. So that's a very small change, but it's a loss of a gene that may have been one of the key th factors in us being able to evolve nice big brains that can do big brainy things. But when we talk about humans and the special characteristics that humans have, of course we usually think about the biology, but we, we, we shouldn't dismiss the layers and layers of culture that we've built up over thousands and thousands of years that make us increasingly more sophisticated. If you take a human and take them outside that cultural context, uh, you might find that their behavior is a little bit more like a chimpanzee, for example. Maybe Mark Thomas is on to something. Maybe it's not just what we're made of that makes us people, it's what we do and how we do it. Maybe it's the way we think. Here on Ngamba Island, chimp researcher Alicia Melis is looking, for the very first time, to see if one human thought process in particular is present in her chimps. Now, humans cooperate. We work together in an organized, disciplined manner. We do it all the time. But as far as I could see, chimps were slightly lacking in the cooperation department. Give them a banana, and it's every chimp for himself. Sharing is for losers. So, the experiment. This box of bananas, placed away from the cage, poses a tricky problem. Ah. I see what you've done. To get the bananas to come towards me, I'd have to pull both ends of the rope, but they were too far apart. Right, okay. I can't. Diana, will you be another chimp, please? I'll be another chimp. Chimp cam. Being a cooperative human, I could see that if I didn't get Diana involved, I'd get no bananas at all. And that didn't bear thinking about. One, two, three, oh. We did it, we got the bananas. Now for the chimps. Chimp one has a rational choice. 
share the bananas with chimp too, or get no banana at all. Three, two, one, release the chimp. OK, so, so he can get through. He's going a bit mad. Chimp one can't get, can't get the bananas there. Chimp two's going mad. Chimp one is wondering what's going on. Oh, he's let him out. He's let him out. And now, that's amazing. That's incredible. They work together as a team. They now he's going crazy with the rope. He's nicked the rope. That's brilliant. So they work together as a team. Chimp one, he's very happy. And off they go. That was brilliant. That was so that was quicker than me. They cooperated. They understood. They're people. No? Almost. Yeah, almost. That'll do for now. So what would happen if Chimp One could get the bananas all on his own? Would he share his prize or would he make like a banana and split? I needed to check. So the ropes were put closer together. Chimp One off goes straight away. Works no problem. Chimp Two going crazy. Chimp One understands the problem. He's saying, please, let me. Oh, no. Will Chimp One share the bananas? Apparently not. Oh. Chimp Two, very annoyed about this. Severely vexed. He's looking at Chimp One. Chimp One's got two whole bananas. Will he get... Is he going to give any? He just sits there, mocking him. Wow. So there you have it. Chimpanzees can cooperate. Chimp One really appeared to be making a thoughtful decision. And it's only now, in 2006, that scientists are proving that chimps do this kind of thing. Poor Chimp Two. <laughs> Give him a banana. Hey, listen. Thank you for taking part in this experiment. This is for you. Not a thank you. Things were going well. The evidence was piling up. So it was back to the USA for more. If I'm going to find out whether chimps really are people too, there's one thing I have to consider. One word, it's a big word, it's a good word, but do chimps have culture? By which I don't mean operas or, you know, chimp-based book groups. I'm talking a bit... I'll show you. Take the USA. Everything here is different to the UK. Not vastly different, just different. And why? Is it because they're genetically different? No. Is it because of the climate? No, Americans don't drive on the right just because it's hot. But once things are different, they get passed on. Each generation here learns the American way, the American culture. So the question is, do different chimp tribes have different ways of doing things? Do they have unique chimp cultures? Eminent primatologists Franz de Waal and Andy Whiten want to answer just this question, and they've set up an experiment at the Yerkes Primate Center near Atlanta. This is Anya. Oh, nice catch. They designed this extremely beautiful machine in collaboration with Victoria Horner, assisted on this occasion by Danny Wallace, primate. All you get is a stick. Lovely. And I'm going to put in it a food reward. And it's your job to try and get that out. Right. Ah, how about this? This looks like... I soon discovered one way to get the reward. Poke at it. I was a genius. I did it. But the machine has a second solution. <laughs> it took me a while, but eventually I realised. You lift the lever. I was a genius again. So there you have it. Two ways to get the M&M. Lifting and poking. The next step was to teach one chimp to poke and one to lift.
then put these new expert chimps into different groups and see if the other chimps learn from them. Creating two separate cultural traditions. The lifters and the pokers. And because they're so eager to learn, it works. You can poke or lift and it doesn't really matter which one you do. But because the chimps in each group only do the method that they saw, that's the first really strong evidence that they're learning it. They're definitely learning from each other. It might look simple, but this experiment has taken years to perfect, and it proves absolutely that chimps have the capacity for culture and that they can pass it on to each other down the generations. But what does that mean on a kind of in a wider scale? We have culture, that's not in question. If chimpanzees also have culture, it's by no means a unique human trait which it has been suggested it was. Until well, loads of people have all suggested that, haven't they? They yes. said, oh, we're so different from the apes because we've got culture That's and right. they've got nothing. Mm -hmm. And you're essentially saying it's not true. It was said that humans are unique because they use tools. Well, hang on, so do chimps. OK, let's, let's move on. Maybe it's language. Well, chimps show rudimentary language skills too. It's culture. Chimps show culture too. So what is uniquely human, I think, is the question. Mm. This was exciting. Victoria is a scientist who discovered yet another human trait that chimps have too. So, would Victoria back my campaign? Would I finally get a scientist to agree with me? Are chimps people too? No, but chimpanzees are fascinating in their own right, and I don't think whether a species is interesting or not should be measured by how similar they are to us. Um, chimpanzees are uniquely chimpanzee, um, and that's what makes them interesting, and the fact that we share an ancestor with them. They're not people, but they are still absolutely fascinating and uh, intriguing. So here's the thing, right? I, I don't want to sound petulant about this, but it does seem as if my new colleagues in the world of scientific research aren't really on side. It's slightly frustrating. I thought I'd have a bit more backup than this. It just seems that every time I say anything to them, you know, I can say, chimps, do they have culture? And they'll say, yes, yes, Danny, they do. And I'll say, well, do they have language? And they say, yes, yes, Danny, they have language. And I say, well, does that make them people then? And they say, no, Danny, you are clearly insane. And I'm back to square one. I'll be honest, I don't really know what my next move should be. But then... Danny, if you don't think chimpanzees are human-like enough, um, you should go to the bonobo. Uh, the bonobo is a species that is equally close to us as the chimpanzee, genetically exactly equally close to us, and I would say equally relevant to understand human evolution. The bonobo is uh, sexier, has a lot of sex for food, sex for peace, uh, is more gentle, less violent, it's female-dominated, a lot of people have trouble with that because uh, they don't expect a close relative to be female dominated, but that's what they are. Uh, and, and in general, a, a gentler animal, and so maybe that would be more interesting for comparisons with people. Suddenly, not only had I found out about bonobos, but I'd also discovered what were meant to be the most incredible bonobos on the entire planet. And it's when you see these apes that you realize you're now in a different league. Keep, keep doing it. You can get on. Make the fire come out. Yeah. There. Now, combination. Sue Savage Rumbar is a scientist, but not one like I'd met so far. Sue treats her bonobos as if they really are people. And while I was there, Pan Benicia was hungry, so Sue did the sensible thing. I want you to take the paper out of your noodles that are getting hot. Take it out real quick so you don't burn yourself. Take it out. Pull it out. Uh 
Uh-huh. Is the paper too hot? It is? Is it scary? It's what? It's, it's scary. Well, maybe you could use a knife. Do you see a knife? Yeah, get you a knife. Get the paper out with your knife. Get the paper out with it. We don't want to cook the paper in the noodles. We need to get it out. There you go. Oh, oh, it's going to get on fire. Oh, good, good. I was amazed. A chimp had essentially just made itself a pot noodle. As a scientist, Sue's methods are somewhat unorthodox. So that's Matata. Hello. She gets very close to her bonobos. Jeez, it's incredible. They really do seem to be communicating quite effectively uh, with Sue. You want carrots or clay? Which one of these would you like? Point Can you see her pointing yeah. to that one? Okay, let's get some of these, okay? Sue pays special attention to four of her bonobos. In fact, she's bringing them up almost as part of her family. All his life, this fella, Kanzi, has been learning to speak English using a keyboard that matches pictures with words. Chalk. Crayon. Watermelon. Candy. Box. I suddenly realized this could be my chance to actually speak to a bonobo. Play yard. Play yard. It's a whole new language. This is the kind of thing that Sue's been doing for over 25 years, and she's convinced it's the only way to do this kind of research. Culture is always passed on from one generation to the next in life. So if you're interested in whether or not apes can acquire human culture, you have to give them opportunity to have a human life. But we also, as you've seen, give them opportunity to have a, bo a bonobo life. These bonobos can do many human-like things, and they can do many bonobo-like things. Well, I've never seen that before. I, Chase, Kanzi, question. It was time to see if Kanzi would speak to me. Tell him he doesn't understand you already told him. Kanzi. Play yard. Yes. Kanzi. Try to. Chase. Me. Yes. Chase. Me. It was an incredible moment. Thanks. I thought just, just, just. I can't believe I just talked to a bonobo and a bonobo talked to me and invited me to play. Come on. I'll race you. There. Now, clearly, yes. I know this is just anecdotal evidence. It's personal experience. But to me, my connection with Kanzi felt like an amazingly strong link. I was quite disappointed when I met um, some scientists recently because it really did seem like they, they just closed off and said, no, we've decided, we've categorized it, and, 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 and that's that. It's very easy for us to want to, to shut off 
our relationship to them and think we're extraordinarily different. Most of the studies are done on captive apes. They're shifted around from zoo to zoo. And you can imagine if you took two-year-old children and put them in a cage and sprayed it down every day and gave them chow and apples to eat and didn't raise them in a city, didn't raise them in a family, didn't get to go to Cub Scouts, didn't get to go to the circus, didn't get to go to the mall, they wouldn't become human. <laughs> you got me. Is he playing? Good. What Sue had said struck a chord with me. Perhaps if you can treat a bonobo as a person, they can become a person. Maybe this type of person is not born, but made. Now, I'm not saying they're members of the human race, but couldn't they be apes and people? Because after all, isn't that what we are? Race? Chase? I hope we're playing. <laughs> Listen, Sue, I had a brilliant time. Well, because you seemed to take to you, Danny. There was a certain bonding going on, wasn't there? There was I a certain he friendship. Likes your stance and your chest and yeah? the friendliness in your eyes. I am fairly manly yet friendly. <laughs> Uh -huh. I think I think we can agree on that. Um, listen, I, I had a brilliant time. I mean, I, you know, I've I've been to Uganda and I've I've met other chimps and and these bonobos, it's a whole other level. And well, I'm glad to hear that. And I'm I, glad to hear it worked for you. It certainly did. It's convinced me even more that you know chimps and bonobos are kind of like people too. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that what you think? I think so. And what do you think will happen with Kanzi's offspring and his grandsons? They're going to get more and more people yeah, like. They will. Thanks, Sue. Thank you. See you soon. OK, bye-bye. Bye. So, my journey was at an end. I'd met my share of apes, I'd bonded with some of them, and I'd met my share of scientists, most of whom I didn't bond with. Apologies to them. Ultimately, I think all this is a question of potential. So maybe chimps aren't quite ready to be given the vote. But, you know, give them time, they're getting there. So should they be treated as if they're people too? Well, that's up to the chimps that got there first. Us. You can meet more of my chimp friends, take the chimp vote, and see more of my travels on our website. Go to bbc.co.uk slash horizon. I'll see you in there. <laughs> yeah. So that's Clara and her baby Caro.